There's a field of psychology called body image research, and it's really bad at accounting for black women's body shame and disordered eating. It really ignores their experiences and it re really ignores any racism they might find, they might come across. So we were trying to say concretely to that field in particular that the representation of black women is really poor and it contributes to their body shame. The research was a content analysis of popular mainstream women's magazines, Vogue and Elle, and popular black women's magazines, Ebony and Essence. And we coded every image of an adult woman for her appearance attributes, whether her body type was thin or average or heavier, um, for her age, and also for how racialized her appearance was. So specifically, that means whether she had lighter skin whether she had a narrower nose as opposed to a wider nose, and whether she had straighter, relaxed hair rather than Afro hair. The aim of our study was to show in a concrete, quantitative way that black women face all the appearance pressures that women in general face from media such as these magazines, but also increased appearance pressures around racism, such as to straighten their Afro hair, to have lighter skin than they are born with, or to have a narrower nose than they are born with. In terms of body shame and eating disorders, which we know are related to media imagery like this, black women certainly do have to contend with this problem. And it shows that it is a problem for black women, despite uh, previous research in my field claiming otherwise. One of the implications from this study was for the field of body image research to take an intersectional perspective and stop minimising black women's body shame and eating disorders. Researchers in that field need to stop ignoring black women and implicating black women as immune to body shame. They're clearly not and they face extensive appearance pressures.